The research I've been involved with, uh, and it's not my work alone, but in conjunction with a couple other researchers, uh, involves using sound to directly affect invertebrate life forms, most particularly bark beetles, uh, trying to shut down and change their reproductive behaviors and trying to, to reduce their populations and numbers. And so after about a decade of research, we came to develop this system that was then patented. The patent itself covers the combination of using the sounds of the insects themselves against them, playing back to them the sounds that they would normally create and use to communicate. And then that is combined with artificially generated sounds, electronically generated sounds, that uh, are produced by a set of circuitry that I invented that is based upon a particular uh, ordinary differential equation uh, that is what we call non-linear cha chaotic uh, dynamics. This is the prototype that allows a lot of different initial conditions to be played with. Sound has been used in pest control, but usually what happens is very quickly mice or other creatures get accustomed to the sound and it no longer bothers them and they just simply return. In this case, no habituation is possible because it's changing so radically over time and never, never actually repeats the same thing. The process that was involved in my coming to do this kind of work is a polemic that I'm trying to assert, which has to do with the role that artists can play in conjunction with the sciences. Science is probably the most important survival uh, strategy that humans have come up with. But in order to do that, they, it has to be deeply rigorous. There's also a downside to that, which as the, the, the philosopher and, and biologist used to teach at this university, Gregory Bateson, uh, used to say uh, that rigor alone is a paralytic death and imagination alone is insanity. The thing I, I would tell both artists and scientists is that there is this deep complementarity possible. So most recently I, I'm working with a, one of my graduate students in trying to miniaturize all of this technology uh, to put it into a form which would be uh, small enough that we could implement this in very, very large numbers of trees. And one of the ways to do that is to use a, a local FM radio broadcast where we just need to put an amplifier and a transducer on each tree and then we can simply broadcast the sounds outwards into a fairly large area. People have asked me how can you do this to these little living creatures? And my response has been, well, my, my beetle karma is really bad, but my tree karma is really good. <laughs>